So guys, welcome to another episode <coughs> of Life of Lost. I am Sam and this uh, is Megan. And yeah, welcome to another episode this week. So how how would you like to start start uh highs and lows. Of course, highs and lows. <clears throat> would you like to go first? No. <laughs> okay. I guess a high that I'd like to that I consider a, Sorry, that was Oreo. <laughs> he has a really hard toy and he's playing in the background. Yeah. <clears throat> a high that uh, a big high that I have was starting to run again this week. I'm starting to enjoy running again. Um I feel like things are moving more fluid in my body since I've started to run. And I'm um, going to try and keep that up a lot more this upcoming year. And let's see. A low I think a low would be not having <laughs> not having any good shows to watch recently. Mm-hmm. I think that's a that's a low of mine. Yeah, we f- finished. What did we finish this week? Alice in Borderlands. Yeah, that was great. Yeah, really. I really really liked that show. Yeah, I like it. I liked I liked it because there's a really great conclusion. And hopefully, as much as I'd like it, I hope they don't make another season. You hope they don't. Mm-hmm. Uh, yeah, I feel like it. It just, it was nice. It just ended and it's kind of in the air, but that's okay. Yeah. All right. So my high for this week it was really nice. I kind of took most of the week off. <laughs> I really wanted to get a lot more done last week, but I think it is what it is. I might work a little tomorrow. I might work a little today. I'm not really sure. I also just don't want to stress myself out. And I, I really enjoyed um, having the week off because... I kind of like test runs where I obviously know I don't want to do a nine to five for the rest of my life. So this to me is kind of like a test run, getting to wake up whenever you want to, being able to kind of relax, like have a relaxing morning, take Oreo out. Sam's been making breakfast in the mornings. That's been super nice. And then to just jump into work and not feel the stress of, you know, your nine to five. So that was really cool. That was a high, uh, a low for this week was Oreo has been pretty sick. Not really sure what's going on. It's more like when he goes to the bathroom, he just been like having diarrhea and he has to wake up in the middle of the night and he's crying in the background right now. But um, did, did his toy go under something? I don't know. But he's just been having to get up at like midnight or 2.30 in the morning and he just kind of shakes and he's like, that's our sign to know that he has to go out. So that's been kind of crappy. Um, so we've been changing his diet to very bland just been giving him more water, just trying to figure it out. So that's kind of just a little bit of a low, just a little bit of worrying there. But yes, that is high and low. Kind of going back to this week, I think it's kind of nice to be able to experience, like kind of taking our foot off the gas, so to speak. Because it's like when you have the nine to five, it's been so stressful trying to do everything that you want to do. And then on top of all the other responsibilities you feel like you have to do so that's been nice but I know you've been saying you're a little anxious to go back to work yeah I've just been starting to think about a lot of things um, when it comes to work Um, I don't know if anyone else can relate to this but I think this is the first time I've really kind of understood the the grandiose of what work is and more specifically like corporate work and how how it operates it's very it's a very weird thing um there are i don't know I, you start to understand how you get further in your career the avenues that you need to take you don't need to take them, but if you want to get further, you kind of need to do these certain things, um, like working extra, like, you know, do, going over above and beyond, making connections. Not that you wouldn't want to make connections, not that I stray from making connections, but um, I don't know. I have a weird thing about forcing something for 
an agenda, but it's weird because I couldn't say that I wouldn't be if it were revolving around my music career. I'd have a lot easier of a time trying to force a relationship in a musical setting than a corporate setting. Because I feel like it also just gives you that extra bump, though, in a corporate setting to do more. You know, everybody wants or would probably like a raise, you know, to get paid more, bonuses, things like that. But when you have to keep pushing to get that and then you get it, you, you just you're just adding more work. Y- yeah. And I just I don't know. That's just not that's just not me. I don't I don't want to get fur- far enough into a career where that's that's just me like like i represent that company i don't want to be a ceo you know i don't want to be any higher label because that company will be there long after you it was there before you and it'll be long after you and what do you really bring you bring money to the bigger corporation and the money will never equal the amount of money you get you make like if i'm gonna if i make like a hundred thousand dollars as a senior person and i'm trying to close an account for another company the company that i'm closing the account for is making millions Mm -hmm. and it will never equal the amount of money that the company overall makes is that is that what you represent and this isn't like i'm not trying to look down on anything i just to me it just i never was able to fit in in that setting and i don't know if that setting is just specifically to corporate but just maybe like just the idea of like a popular setting of popular kids, talkative kids, kids who, I don't know, I don't even know how to put the right formula of words together to explain kind of how I feel about it. But I guess it relates to me not wanting to go back because as much as I don't want to get go up the ladder, I don't necessarily like being looked at at because I'm in a specific place in the ladder. But that's just me. Yeah, it's kind of playing limbo. Just more interested in trying to get out of out of that nine to five. So I think that. But what does that even mean? You know, like nine to five. To me, it's like very bland. It means exactly what you're talking about, like staying working for like a company and not being able to see any progress from you personally, on a personal level, you're seeing progress of a company and you don't reap those benefits. The company does, you know, the CEO does, somebody else bigger than you, higher than you will. And if you don't strive for that, if you don't want to be a CEO or you don't want to be a manager or anything, a supervisor, then it just, it comes down to, you're going to stay kind of at the end of the ladder. And it's hard to have half of your life be kind of taken over by that. And then the other half, you're trying to work your way up on your own by yourself. And I think it, that takes a lot of discipline. You know, not anybody's telling you, oh, this needs, you don't have a Monday morning meeting with yourself and say, this needs to get done. This, and I mean, that'd be a good idea. But when you're in a, with a company, they set boundaries, they set standards, they, you know, set pretty much all your limitations for you. Yeah. And it's very stressful because you don't get to make those decisions on your own. But I really liked this week on how we were able to do that. And I know going forward, you know, that's the goal is to have every week be like this week and even harder. I know this week it was nice because it was more of like a a laid back approach to working, but we still got a lot of hours in. And I know that moving forward, too, we'll just have to turn the gear up a little bit and just push forward even more. Sorry, I just I just feel very pessimistic about going back. Um, it's not pessimistic. Pessimistic is looking at it with a negative attitude. I'm more, I guess, a nihilistic or just realistic observation of what's going to happen. Because I know I need a certain amount of hours. I also know I need a certain amount of sleep. I know that based on the amount of hours I give on a daily basis, I just, I question if I have enough time to actually figure it out because music and being an artist you you don't get to turn on and off uh create the creativity and i believe 
like some artists believe out there, that there is a creative hub somewhere in the universe and where all artists get their inspiration and their ideas from. And I believe it comes to them in any time of the day, whether you're a painter, whether you're um, even an entrepreneur, you are an artist. You're an artist in creating a product for somebody to enjoy and there is no on and off switch. You just have this crazy idea. At you, I couldn't even tell you how many times I've heard a musician or an actor or or a um, just a painter get an an idea at like three o'clock in the in the morning and have to wake up and write it down. Um, so that's what I mean. Like I can't just turn. I can't just say like <laughs> I'm gonna work before work or I'm gonna work after work because sometimes the idea just comes and you can't. What are you gonna do? You know, and that's just my question that I have for when I go back to work. Yeah, that that's not that's not an easy circumstance to have is because when like you always say, when you get these flea of moments or it, it comes and you have to work now. But what happens when you really don't have that time? You don't really have that moment to do it. Then you know where your priorities lie. And that's my question to myself is where, where do your priorities lie? What are you willing to do to get to where you want to be? And ultimately, I'll have to make decisions in the future that will lead up to how serious I feel about where I want to go. Because I'm not going to play it safe anymore. I don't want to play it safe anymore. But then you have to you like... have to be risk takers. And, you know, for certain people in my life, they'll judge me on certain things and I won't be understood to a certain degree as I'd like to. Do you know what I mean? Like, you just, I'm, I'm tired of this, like, Yes safe and no, feeling. because it's, like, it's, it's equally super hard because I would love to take more risks, but at the end of the day, the shitty thing is, like, we have a giant rent bill, and that's always what stops me. And so it's more of, like, a monetary thing that gets me and that's kind of my problem is if I only want to work a certain amount of hours a day I can I obviously have to fill a quota of how many hours um bi-weekly I have to do but it's hard because it's like if I want to spend time on other things like soupe like designing or making videos or whatever the case is it's not I don't really have the availability to jump off and make so many risks where I put my other like full-time job in jeopardy and I guess that's the most frustrating part for me is like yeah cool let's make risks but but then then what happens when we don't have enough you know money for rent or and that's happens, literally why or what I'm, happens when you make the risk and it ends up paying off yeah you'll you won't know definitely and, and I know that I won't know but I know that I'm somebody I've always been somebody in my life where I don't know I don't know what I want until I see what I want. I don't know how anyone can make much sense of it, but I know there are people in this world who can see something, know when it's not the right thing, but know when it's the right thing. I don't know how else to describe it, but I need to I need to polish that that per piece of myself because I I have it. It's there. I just I need to. I, I can't be, I, I need to be less afraid. That's all. I, I need to be a lot less afraid. Um, I don't know. May, maybe it's it's different for you because I've been literally, I've been trying to do this since I was 13, 14 years old. It's about 15 years, a decade and a half of just wanting this one thing. You know, so the urge and the desperation in me is a lot more potent and strong. Same yeah, with I guess like, like, same that's with why Raiders I player. would love to just, yeah. that's oh. why it's really hard to stay in the city sometimes. Like it, sometimes it doesn't like make sense to me because of how like but crazy that's how you work. expensive you, you, it is. I, I, I know, but you know, you, there's a reason why people are in the city because the city is a hub of creativity. The city is a hub of inspiration. The city is a hub of pressure. Um, something which, you know, a lot of places outside the city don't give you. And, you know, we're not, we're not 
you know, if you're established, like for instance, Porter Robinson, he can go back to, to maybe where he was. Yeah. But because he's established, he understands his network of how he can create a song and finesse it and make it really great. He doesn't need that pressure of like, okay, this is my defining moment. He already had his defining moment. And now he just needs to learn how to capitalize off of it. So it's like, yeah, no, I, I get you. Um, just a lot of questions in my head um, about how to how to do it. <laughs> and I'm not going to like tell you all the secrets that I have and all the go into all the in depth with everything. But it's just, you know, I, I hope other people can understand and relate to my, you know, frustration and just trying to find the solution. Do you have any like big goals you want to do for next year? Like, yeah. Like, the differences? Yeah. Yeah. I definitely want to elevate my music to another level. Try not to say too much because I don't want to mm-hmm. jinx any of it. But yeah. definitely would like to make a lot bigger strides this upcoming year um, with my music. And maybe, just maybe, I'd like to actually create my own style my own niche sub stub sub style the one thing that i can though the inspiration to the thing where it's like if you hear a song by sam hersher you know oh that's sam yeah <laughs> not just like oh that sounds like a really cool song who is it oh you know yeah because i know who's an example who has like their own porter robinson style. was okay. a great great example you know he he did those big edm house like um songs you know he was known for those um you know i'll give you he was known for uh porter robinson i don't know if you guys follow me much but porter robinson is a really good uh he's somebody who i'm really inspired by you know he created shelter sad machine goodbye to the world just these big edm like hits um very typical of what was popular during his rise um But he decided after that to really kind of shy away from that and really get into who he wants to be, um, which is uh, just very, how did he say it? Just, uh, wow, just a very more natural, like organic kind of style, not as typical as like EDM would go and same with io io like when i listen to an io song i know that's io and honestly i know it because of the kick it's like i don't know how it's so it's so like prominent poppy and um but dry it's it but it's wide and it's not heavy on the top it's very like yeah it's very poppy like it's not like it's like you know like a clappy yeah clappy crispy crispy that's what it is very crispy you know and the snare is very crispy and uh, distorted y. So, you know, I, I like that a lot. And I'm very, like, inspired by artists who are able to create their own style in their sounds. So, that's definitely a goal of mine, is to find my true sound. I think I, I, think I have something good. So, I'm gonna. It all depends on how well I'm able to transition this, how I can how I can get this song to the finish line that I'm working on that I'm really proud of and how I can kind of use that template and kind of go for it again, create using similar-ish sounds, but a completely different style and, and song in itself. And that will be my, if I can, so my first defining thing of this year, well, if I can figure out this song and, and get it to the finish line. The second defining moment of my life will be if I can duplicate that in a, in a second dairy song. Mm-hmm. And that will be the second defining life because every song after the third, the fourth, the fifth, the sixth, it won't have the same hit as that second song because I know, meaning the same hit is like it will be as, cat, it, it hopefully will be as catchy as the la- first two, but but it will fall in the in the same bracket as that second song and how I can transition the second the third will be easier the fourth will be like not easier but you know you'll know certain things that you struggled with with the with the um the first song you won't with the third song because you've finessed it in the second song and being able to kind of template it out because you know artists aren't necessarily like they're not you're you're not going to see an artist create a completely separate template off of um 
a previous song. You know, that's just like honestly madness. You you have your specifics. You know, you have your specific sounds, you have the specific kick drums that you like, and you gravitate in between like those few kick drums that you like, the snare drums that you like, because you understand that there are specific sounds that are defined, that you have been defined by. And in order to keep that list, like your trademark, you know, you have to have those trademarks. And this is interesting how people do that, because it makes sense. You know, why would you want to change up a good thing if you believe that it, that it, it works? Why, you know, I don't know. It's all these little things and intricate things that I notice when I hear music. But, um, I think that's a really good thing to go for. I think you've been trying to find like this template kind of example. Yeah. For a while, trying to create it, and it's not been easy at all. You want to talk about what, uh, what happened two weeks ago? What you signed and stuff? No. no? Okay. No. Um, it's so funny. You're very like modest and very, and then like, I know why you don't want to jinx anything, but like to me, I'd be freaking out. I'd be like, Oh my God, but yeah. it's cool. Let's talk about it another time. Yeah. More of like, I understand. I understand how, I understand how the industry works and I know when and I can't even say anything without even sounding presti- pres- prestigious. What is that when somebody thinks that they know more than they know? <laughs> yeah. Yeah. I don't want to sound like that, but I just, I'll have my time one day. Yeah, to talk about it and everything. Yeah. I feel that. Yesterday was really nice. We went out um, to a local place and we brought our little notebook and a pencil and we kind of jotted down goals or kind of mapped out a few things that we want to do for next year, which was really nice. And you had a drink called a zombie. And it was funny because the guy next to us, yeah, the guy next to us said, um, something about, yeah, that drink is only, it's limited one per customer. And I was like, what does that mean? And then we go and look back because Sam had shown me the drink list and he's like, this, you wanted zombie or another one? I forgot. Like, like beach, like a beach drink. Yeah. And I was like, oh, zombie. Cause it sounds harder. <laughs> Should not have listened to you. I know. And it looked cooler. So I was like, ah, this one. But yeah, it was pretty, it was pretty crazy. You said it was very strong. Yeah. And I got a really tall pina colada and that was really good. So we did that last night, which was fun. And <laughs> of course, while we're while we're sitting there well no when we got home after we had drank a little bit we had gotten ice cream with oreo and i was like maybe maybe it'd be kind of cool to be sober for the year Mm -hmm. and so that's i think one of my big goals is to be sober for the near year not that um not that i drink really all that much i'd say 2020 was probably one of the heaviest times that i drank the most and then uh before that was probably college but I just think it's, you know, a clear mind, no caffeine. And for me, no caffeine, no, um, I was like smoking or drinking. I feel like I'm rich or... piano. Just, I don't give a fuck, whatever it takes, <laughs> you know? Yeah. <laughs> yeah, I don't know. I, do, you, and I guess like I'm the opposite with that because yeah. it's whatever it takes is like, is is it's also whatever it takes. And that to me is like having a clear mind is kind of whatever it takes. And another goal was like waking up every morning at 4 a.m. That to me is like my whatever it takes. Not like I need to have how much, you know, milligrams of caffeine was he having a day? 2,000. Yeah. That's On top of having, fucking... taking Adderall and doing steroids. Yeah. So his whatever it takes got him killed at how how old? Um, I'd say honestly 50, 55. 55. Yeah. But I mean, the dude, the dude, the one thing I can say about him is that he did what he loved and that was who he was. And he created one of the biggest, like, I, I, I don't even know, one of the biggest lifestyles. He was a trendsetter. He was like, talk about a man who stuck to his guns. Talk about a man who did not give a fuck what anyone else said or 
thought about him and he just wanted to be the biggest motherfucker at the gym and not care about all these like cool new trends about like oh i want to be toned and like ripped and all those like natural physiques and shit that they you know are uh, were showing off after kind of like the era like you know the ronnie coleman era of bodybuilding i think that was when it hit its peak and it kind of was there but yeah. but you know a lot of natural like all natties kind of came up and they wanted to like you know represent they didn't want to necessarily take steroids which is debatable now but but rich really stuck to his guns in terms of like the the late 90s like early 2000s schwarzenegger eras like he really loved that kind of like bigger than life kind of mentality and, and I loved that. I loved how he did that. I loved how he didn't give a fuck. I loved how he liked to wear those fucking bucket hats and, like, how he liked girls and just with big asses and big tits. You know, like, just a straight up just a dude. And he lived it. He lived his life. He didn't, it wasn't all for show. And he did what he did to, to get to where he was. And I, I respect it because he just made a decision. Um, and it ultimately killed him. But the man, the man was happy. The man was doing, doing the world, touring the world. He, whenever he would ever go to the fitness expos, his line would be the longest out of all of these guys. The, you, did you know that? His yeah, line would be that, longer than Jim Shark. His line would be longer than Limp Fit. His line would be longer than any other freaking line. What I respected about him the most is that he stayed. He stayed. And he signed work. all of those oddball, yes. oddball, oddball bodybuilders and like MMA fighters. All these like like weirdos that looked funny and shit. He was like, I want you. I like you. You know, and I just yeah. love that. I love that. Creating real food, you know, like always like just creating these rich ridiculous protein shakes and stuff i don't know he is missed he is very missed and i always look up for him um you know because he died with what do you what do you love to do and yeah if i it's knew kind of him, hard though because like it sucks he he did everything he wanted to do but under under uh having body dys dysmorphia which is just another just thought sometimes and i think about him like it's it's awesome i love that he was the oddball out i love that he was like the freak of kind of nature the you know the this big giant guy who did steroids he had a giant heart though like literally he was super kind and loving and caring but it just kind of is sad because it, a lot of it did come from body dysmorphia and and i don't know what that means i guess i'm just trying to think like if he I'm not trying to say that it's a good thing or a bad thing, I guess, because if he didn't have that, then he wouldn't probably go as hard as he did for everything that he wanted. But if he, you know, didn't, would he still be alive and what would he be doing otherwise? I, I don't know. I think, yeah, I think that's definitely the difference between me and you at the core, at the true core. I think you are designed to preserve you want to preserve. And me, I care more about the found the foundational I care more about the I care more about the play the I care more about the the life changing event than the longevity of the event. Like if I could create one of the biggest songs but only have ten years to live because of that, I would do it. Because that's just like you know what I mean? In a nutshell, that's no, how. No, I don't. Because it's like you, you have Maya, you have a family. So like in reality, to me, that's like silly. But, but I for somebody be, who's been like fighting for that for the and past And for somebody who years, just wants to be but, happy. If Maya, would Maya want me to be upset my whole life because I didn't get to where I wanted to be and I ultimately dish it out on like everybody around me? Or do I want to go out in a blaze of to a certain extent of glory and just try and throw it all on the table and just try and get as far as I can, um, then then that's that's what I uh, that's what I would want to do. Yeah. And but like I said, like I think that it need there needs to be people like you to balance out people like me in this world, um, because I think equally it's important to be able to understand the preservation of a good thing to be able to live a long life. Um, and uh, to battle out that other that other aspect of uh, of a person who kind of thinks in the short term ish, but 
but you know me i like i I created a very drastic scenario like i would (laughs) never like knowingly give up my life but like how can you know anything in your life and why would i you know what i mean like it's like oh i got i got this really big gig to play really big edm festival in nevada but my plane blows up (laughs) and then you could sit there and say sam i don't know if you should go in this rainy weather and i'm like i think it'll be okay and then it you know like what like yeah you might die sam and i'm like but I guess, I guess, should I cancel this? It's my like one shot, you know? I, I don't know. Like, it's a weird sit scenario. I, but like equally, like, I w- that here's the problem, though. You wouldn't be saying something with no, like, that. that wouldn't be something I wouldn't not take lightly. That's the problem, right? You know what I mean? Like how I say sometimes when you say something out loud, it, I can't Un-hear say it. it, and so I can't full heartedly just go through the decision that I made because now I hear that like that makes sense. Damn, I can't, you know. Yeah. But, but it's you know so so what I mean to say is like your words and your your opinions um, come from a very logical place because it's not illogical at all because I am putting that into my calculations and I'm like oh shit, <laughs> god damn it, <laughs> but. So, you know, just to let you know, like, you you know, you, you, the points and the things that you make are, like, so even more valid than the points that I make. To yeah, extent. it's like, I understand trying to be dramatic and trying to feel things out and trying to put those scenarios in your head, too, to say, like, what if this happened? Could I handle it? Just like some people think dreams are situations where or where's the scenario in your body just kind of thinking of like how would you handle this if this were presented to you um that's kind of one way an interesting way to look at a dream but I recently just I just have this really big knack to not be in the city anymore and to just literally live off of land and have chickens and grow food and I just have this strong desire to do that more and more recently and it's really hard because I have the availability to do that in Peru and but obviously like that's uprooting everything that I have right now and it just is kind of infuriating to be honest because I like what do you do when you want both things you you don't get both things so one of them you're just gonna kind of be upset about to an extent and hopefully push one day that you can maybe have both things where you'd be able to go back and forth or create your own because you have the availability to do that. Um, but, but yeah, it's, I guess, thinking big or thinking extreme. And I don't know, maybe this is just a phase. It, it was definitely a phase a few years ago where I just wanted to do that. Um, your mind will sabotage you. Um, and I mean that because, yeah, you're right. Like, how long will this desire to go to the country last? And even if it does last forever, how will, you know, wouldn't you want to be able to leave on your own terms in a sense of being able to to know that you you had some goal and you kind of got to a position where you were able to now kind of go and focus on something else um, without just kind of like going to three, but divert and you just go there. Whoops. Yeah, and I guess that... Whoops. What the hell? Okay. Recording still, right? Yeah. I think so. Okay, sorry guys. I guess the... F- the hard thing about it is thinking that, yes, you'd, you'd ideally love to do that, but equally just feeling sometimes that I'm just missing out on like living a life without having to worry about these giant goals. Like, obviously, I'm not going to give up on everything. But it also makes me feel like sometimes I, I just want to just live like that, like a chill life and not having to panic all the time, not having to be in a rush all the time, not having to, like, be so stressed out, um, be constantly around, like, so many people in the city and things. And so understanding that that would equally you wouldn't you would be kind of giving some of that up why be because you would be up. yeah because you'd be with family and you'd just be trying to figure that part out but then equally that you're not really going to be pushing 
further for the generations of your family, right? Because then you kind of, in my opinion, you kind of like settled and pushed out all these notions of dreams and things. So it's just very complicated, I guess, in my head because I, I can go back and forth a lot. I can tell you the pros and the cons and then the cons of the pros and the pros of the cons. Like it's it's frustrating. Um, but yeah, I just, it's just a thought. Yeah, I know. I, I hear you. I hear you. And for anyone who's listening, you know, if you have a goal, I just, I implore you to just like stick with that goal. And no matter what, you know, all these th- thoughts in your mind, if you have them, try not pay, try to pay uh, no mind to them to a certain degree. And just know that when you accomplish the goal that you set out to accomplish, you will be able to get to those places because you have to ask yourself too, are you willing to risk all of these, all of the, all of the, the steps that you came to get here, all of this, you know, recognition and, and accolades that you, you know, all these wins that you got there, are you willing to kind of like, just say, oh, okay, I don't want to, you know, go there. I guess the reason why I, I you know, the, um, I'm a little bit like it, it, it kind of hits a little hard for me is because I've seen a lot of great, great talented people just not follow through with that. <laughs> just not follow through with like the, the, the task at hand, you know, and, and they could have been so great so amazing i could i literally envisioned them i could like there were times i could literally envision certain people in my life and just like how cool they would look like on stage and like how amazingly like their profile pictures would be how their talks would be how they would inspire all these like kids and shit and and now look at them you know they're no they're 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 living in the car or um but we don't even know sometimes to an extent too, like the people who don't go through with things. You're right. We, ju- if, if we don't they, know. Like, if they like, like, if they were okay and like happy and I don't, that's the problem is like you have this mindset of like, you want that goal and like, you're not going to give up to that goal. But it, there's also it leaves that possibility that it doesn't do anything for you once you get it. So would you rather have gotten to that goal and not find happiness than had not gone to that goal and still not necessarily have found happiness. But that's the, that's the other part of it too, right? You there is no, no other part because no at the end idea of the day, if there's, if there's happiness in, in either in any direction that you go, if you, look you up have to create studies, that. But if you look up studies, you will see that the human, there, there does, there's a lot more per <laughs> Getting a goal accomplished is a lot more fulfilling and regardless of how you feel about it. Like if you, if you, for, for your own, for your own character, for your own person, I I don't even know how to describe it. I'm not saying goals aren't good. I'm I'm not saying to like just roll over. I'm saying that goals change. That's all. Like. That if you have a goal in, in one place, obviously right now, being in New York City, I have a goal of one thing. If I were to be somewhere else, that goal would ha- obviously change. I wouldn't just sit down and like say... It like would I'm change, but the, but the goal that you set prior wouldn't be fulfilled. And it really depends then if you ask yourself, how bad do you want that goal? Mm-hmm. And that's that's ultimately, like you said, that Neil, that Nesp, that guy who said like all these people that they didn't follow through with their goal because of x y and z and now like you said like that's the mo- that's the most the, the graveyard thing we said those those uh they're the best ideas are, are not are in the grave mm-hmm. because those are the bunch of people who decided not to do it why do they decide not to do it because it gets hard and when it gets hard what do people do they question things they question if this is the right thing they question if this is really what they want to do with their life they question if, if they're even good enough to compete and those are very very common and very okay thoughts to have as someone who is dealing with a very difficult task at hand you question a lot of things i quite even when i was in high school i questioned you know can i can i can i even compete like with my math can i even compete with my history like why do i even need to know this i don't even need to know this and those thoughts were very coming from a very ignorant place which is just me not being able to understand and remember the material that I needed to pass the class. Look at me trying to justify, like, I don't even, like, why we need to learn about World War One? Nothing. Like, I remember telling my teacher, like, Mr. Mr. Uh, Mr. H, 
And I said, like, look, we don't even need to word. I was like, you know, trying. I was failing in AP history. I was like, well, we don't even. It just makes sense. Like, why? Like, why can't we learn about the wars? And he's like, but you have to understand, like, there are certain things that 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 were founding pieces that led to these wars that are just as important as the actual war itself. And I know wars, learning about wars are cool, but also learning about the politics that led to the war is even more important because you have to understand why that war happened. And I'm like, that's stupid. <laughs> and then I got kicked out of AP history after that because you um, literally told him that's stupid. Yeah. I said, that's the, uh, can we just learn about Yeah. And, and, oh, and then like I failed out because I just wasn't buying in. I wasn't understanding yeah. and I wasn't learning. And, I, and that's why like, you know, I guess it's just like, this is more and less of like, you know how a lot of, maybe not other people think this, but I like to believe this, that, you know, there's a many universes out there and that there's universes out there that are, it's, it, there are different universes out there and like are doing every single thing that you are doing except, except like doing something else. And why are we thinking about these unexisting universes just because <laughs> you see like just because like so when i go down to it the root of it yeah i think about like the top three times that i've been happy in my life and it's not being in the city it's like being like on top of a mountain and just sitting there and watching the sun set and i don't know if that's like maybe the end goal is just to like have a house on the top of a mountain or something and it so I guess that's why sometimes, like like I said, I'm not going to give up on all the things I want to do. But sometimes I question, like, where the, the root of the happiness is. That's all. Yeah. I question it, too. Um, but then what happens right after I question it is I say, I will double down that question when I get that goal accomplished because like the saying said leave no stone unturned this is the one stone in my life that i do not want to leave unturned yeah <clears throat> happy or not if i turn that stone over and i do not find happiness then i can sit there and say that this was not the stone i needed to turn but then, then i also can say you did it. For better or for worse, you fucking did it. Yeah. Take a bow, you know? Yeah. Fucking cry. Fucking look up at the sky and thank your mother, thank your friends, thank your family for everybody who believed in you. Fucking did it. <laughs> and now you can move on yeah. in peace. And that is why I cannot answer any of my questions of unhappiness, any of my questions of frustration and suffering and why I put myself through these tormenting hours of just Until you trying to fi figure this out. Yeah. Yeah. And, no, that makes sense. And, and, and because it's the principle, it's because of the father that I never had told me that it's important as a man to follow out his goal, to, 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 to commit to something yeah. and see it through till the end. And if I ever have a son, I will tell him that. I will not have him question his self, question his mind, question the reason why he set off to do something because he needs to trust in himself. He needs to trust that his original thought is is valid and important. And he needs to ask himself, are you questioning it because this is hard? Or are you questioning it because you, you don't want to do it anymore? And whether or not it is A or B, do you think that if you get fulfill that goal it wouldn't humble you and make you more of a man than you were before you set off on this quest yeah you know what i mean yeah no definitely i think i agree it's just like this like i said it's just kind of a nagging thing but i also think it's just a distraction to an extent because i feel bad like somebody in your, your family like i you know i i feel like you know that it's like they're like the you know it, 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 it there's no no road that that so therefore it's just like it's like, if, you know, it's, it seems you just like have a, to pick something. All you're trying to say is you have to pick something and you have to just do it. You can't just yes. pick yeah. this thing and say it. You can't talk about all this thing all the time. And I guess at the end of the day, no, that's but where not even my talk two... about it, but go for it. And when it gets hard, say it's not for me. Yeah. Right. That's, that's just kind of, keep pushing. Yeah. And I think that's why, like for this year, I, I brought this up to Sam last night. I was like, I'm, I'm not sure. Is this like not a good goal to have to wake up at four every morning? Because 
I did it for a few months this year, and it was not easy, and I didn't do every single morning, um, but majority of the weeks I did, and it was just really overwhelming, but I, but I had a taste of it, and I think that if I did that every morning, and if I woke up at 4 a.m. every morning, what does that do? That just like preps me for my day, that makes me work before work, that makes me feel like I'm alive, it makes me just push harder for the night before it makes me plan better and makes me eat healthier because I have more time to like make a green drink or to make a smoothie or to just do more instead of feel like I'm in a rush I better just grab something quick it's probably unhealthy that's not going to help my mind like I think that it'll help it I'm fucking scared but I know that if I go a year doing that it also is going to take me away from other things such as like drinking such as going out, such as partying. Not like I did a whole lot of that this year, but it'll also take me out of a certain crowd, a certain group of people that I don't really want to be around in the first place. So my goal also is to kind of like cultivate possibly like a community of people who do wake up at four in the morning and who do wake up and have that same mentality to get shit done. And I think that that's kind of what excites me really too. And to be sober and have a clear mind in that way is really cool too. Yeah. I'm not opposed to shrooms though. No, I, I think anything that is like can more open natural. Mind, yeah, that But I won't it. smoke. <laughs> yeah, no. And that's I, not for me. Yeah, I, I definitely smoke to just like kind of put my mind at ease because I do you know, I keep myself up at night thinking about song arrangements and just ideas and just a lot of things. So it's nice to turn my mind off for a little bit. But um yeah, with that, uh, with that said, I, I know this is like the last podcast of, of, the, the, year. of the year. So <laughs> you get to see an inside mind of me battling with me. And yeah, Sam and me trying to just like, <laughs> yeah, like, yo, it's so simple. Just please, like, the problem is, is that the, the, what makes it so hard is that your questions are, your questions, your questions for yourself are not something that can be answered. And so much so that, it's like, I just want to tell you the part that's questioning, just like, just shut the fuck up. Like, yeah. don't, just trust me on this. If you love that, like the side questioning, if you just, if you love, just please just, just humor me for a second. I <laughs> promise you, you're going to, you'll figure it out because I can see it, yeah. but just, you just got to stop because it, because I need, I need the other side of, of you, yeah. not this side of you. Yeah. So just, just, yeah, I get lost a lot I, I see and I need, one. and I do like appreciate you being patient with me and like pushing me back up. And I know that this year it's going to be a little bit different and I'm just hoping that getting control of like my health and trying to figure out a lot of other things will help me. And I'm totally not for like the new year, new me, but I do love that it gives us like a fresh kind of start. Every day is a fresh start. And I guess I'm just going to keep taking that and just keep like pushing. one of the years where it's actually can be a legitimate to a certain extent fresh start. Yeah, f especially for us. Like yeah. this is the first time we've been able to be like in control of like an environment oh, is a big deal. But really, yeah, it's fucking hard. man. when we were back uh, with my family, it was easier in a way. I really feel like I had to. It was easier because I feel like there was you there was already set limitations yeah and when you're free and you don't have well, you're living by yourself you, you don't you like, might not have a reason to get up in the morning and now you have to push yourself and now you have to push yourself like even 10 times harder like yeah. tenfold and that's kind of the hard part is the discipline but we got this yeah so so anyways, when you guys, guys are listening to this this will be like a a new year oh yeah and, and like I, th I think one of the things that we're gonna do is have video for, of yeah us we're gonna now, get back so. on the video that's so you can watch thing. us on um just, just don't judge my double chin right now i'm working on it i don't yeah yeah just listen to our words <laughs> don't look at our faces yeah, <laughs> yeah. All It'll right. be all good. Yeah. Oops. All right, guys. Well, hope you have a happy holidays and uh, wishing you a happy new year. So take care. And we will talk again next week. Mm -hmm. Peace.